Hey guys, it's Trish from Mangtas. Don't miss great tech stories from our guests and our hosts, Jackie Nimink and Wato Delbare. Only here at Mangtas Nation. Welcome to Mangtas Nation Season 2. This season is all about tech of the future. We'll be sharing real-world experiences and featuring astounding guests to help guide you in your tech journey. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. The show starts right now. Hello, everyone. Here's for another day of unearthing remarkable and inspiring tech stories from today's star of the show. Now, our guest for today is a tech and startup advisor and the ex-CTO at Zalora, Asia's leading online fashion, beauty, and lifestyle destination. But without further ado, listeners, please help us welcome our guest, Sylvia Thumb. Hey, Sylvia. Welcome to the show. Hi, Jackie. Thanks for having me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you're, thank you thank you for for being a guest in our show we're so glad to have you here with us today and we're actually excited to have this talk with you today you know you have a very interesting career involving startups and uh, technologies and i'm sure we're going to touch a lot of those points later on in the show but before that sylvia can you pl- please tell our listeners a little bit about yourself yeah, I'd love to. Um, I'm originally from Germany. I was born and raised there, did my education there. Um, I, I got a business degree and after that actually moved abroad. Um, so pretty much spent um, my whole career, the last 15 years, in at first in Europe. Um, and then I moved over to Asia. So I spent a good two years in Tokyo. Um, And since 2013, I'm based in Singapore. Uh, So, yeah, the the, the second half of my career I spent here. And I actually spent it with Zalora this whole time. So I was with the company for nine years up until the end of last year. Um, And since then, I'm dedicating more of my time uh, to a range of companies, uh, mostly startups in Southeast Asia, advising them. And yeah, it's really fun to go back to the roots and uh, explore the startup environment. Nice. And have you always been interested in pursuing a career in tech, Sylvia? No, actually, I first started uh, more in the media and entertainment industry. Uh, so I was, <laughs> even even while I was studying, I, was, I started with some internships at uh, record companies. Um, did that for a few years, uh, but figured out that it was very difficult to build a career there. Um, cause, uh, More difficult yeah. than in tech. <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Because, you know, tech was growing, whereas the music industry was rather shrinking, at least as far as, um, you know, sales and <laughs> making money was concerned. <laughs> so I think, you know, unfortunately, I picked the wrong decade. <laughs> um I persisted for a while, uh, but in the end, figured that um, it it w- it didn't feel like it was leading um, anywhere. Yeah. And so um, I was lucky that uh, one of my colleagues from a record company, he also switched to uh, the startup scene. Uh, he joined a startup. It it was a crowdfunding platform for music projects. So, you know, somehow it was a super unique opportunity where it married both worlds, like the mu- music industry that I came from and it opened the door to work on a digital product. Um, and I was able to do that in, in Japan. They were looking for someone uh, who was based there and uh, the the team was based in Europe. So someone really who could connect between yeah. both worlds and business cultures. I, I think I was super lucky it was so unique you know to find this opportunity um so i went for it and that was really my introduction actually to uh working for a startup and into digital product management and before we go maybe into that a little bit deeper i do want to understand what attracted you to the music industry 
uh, Sylvia? I think it's simply, you know, being a teenager in the 90s, <laughs> where there was like, you know, the 80s and the 90s, where they were like um, some very successful decades in the music industry. Uh, I'm sure you know. <laughs> so, great I kind of music. Like that. Yeah, yeah, really great music coming uh, from from those years. Still now, right? When you when you switch on the radio or when you look at uh, the best selling albums, I mean, it's it's um, yeah, it was really uh, came from that time. Came from that time exactly. So I was inspired for that. I you know, um, I was young. It looked really interesting and and entertaining. But I didn't know anyone in the music industry. So that was the other thing. Like. I really had no relatives or I had no idea how to to get actually a job or uh, an internship. I, I literally just wrote a couple of letters in the beginning and at, at some point it worked. <laughs> and you just went with the flow. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, well, that flow took you from music and uh, media and entertainment to fashion. How did that how did that turn out? How did that go? Um, I think the, the, the theme there is overall that I always worked on consumer goods um, that I was interested in. Uh, so, you know, I wasn't exactly looking for a fashion company. Um, it just kind of, yeah, I just, I just was more interested in the product management side of things. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I could relate to, uh, you know, what they were trying to build uh, at the Zalora because there's a, um, you know, there's a pretty famous company in Europe, uh, Zalando. So it's modeled after their success story or in the U.S. you have Zappos. So I was familiar with those sort of like um, companies who were already ahead a few few years in. I think they were less known here in Southeast Asia. So for me, it was a bit easier to imagine like what this company could become, what Zalora could become, because when I joined, they were less than one year old. So it was still very raw, you know, on trying out things. It was also a startup. Definitely, yeah, very much a startup. <laughs> well, and the... uh, and when you when you say Sylvia, product management, and maybe also for the listeners, could you maybe describe a little bit what that means uh, in your world? Yeah. Yeah, what I mean is um, really the you know definition of product management that comes originally from from Silicon Valley, where you have one person on the team who um, overlooks the product, who makes sure uh, that the vision is there, a mission is followed, and and brings in all kinds of people, brings together all kinds of people that then. Uh, work on this product and um, and make it happen. And so, I worked on on software products. So mostly, you know, the the teams um, that a product manager is looking after, uh, several engineers um, and UX designers. Uh, but it could be also people from the marketing side. Um, I think that's also a bit of a theme in my career that I always love to work with these like bringing people together with uh, different skill sets. So um, at my first job actually working on a, on a digital product, I didn't even know what product management was. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know uh, the, the term or the job title. Um, and then only with the next job, I realized like, oh, okay, there's a whole profession, there's a whole work, like practice out there, um, expertise. Um, but product management has obviously also, I've given a very generic, <laughs> I think, description um, that sort of summarizes the last 15 years, but obviously it's also like a very um, evolving practice. Yeah, and depends on the company as well. And I guess it requires you to understand the business as well as the tech, right? And, and really put it all together. Now, but then you evolved into an actual CTO role. And how did that differ? But also, how did that happen? 
Yeah. Uh, I think it's important to, yeah, to give a bit of context uh, because I, I myself, like, didn't think that I would become or have that title CTO. That was not on my radar <laughs> up until the company actually asked me, uh, do you want to take over uh, the lead for the whole engineering team? Uh, so at Zalora, we, we had a setup and actually also now after I left, the company has still this setup where product and engineering are reporting into the CTO. And um, there's a couple of other companies who also follow this organizational design. But what it meant for me was that I was um, all those years at Zalora actually also quite exposed to technical leadership, what that means. And I think over the years, the lines got a bit blurry as well. Um, and obviously, I was working side by side with the, with the previous CTO. And so kind of like... Mm -hmm. As, I, as my responsibilities were expanding and I was helping him on various topics, I grew very organically into the role. Um, and then at the beginning of 2019, um, took over. But yeah, I had to adjust my mindset actually quite a bit because for, you know, all those years before that, I had in mind, okay, I love product management, you know, I'm going to stay like I picked this as my career path and so maybe I'll be a CPO one day but the CTO the the kind of like yeah little little turn into um having a lot of technical responsibility I didn't quite uh foresee but it was I think by far the biggest opportunity I I had in my career and um I'm really happy it happened yeah yeah and it kind of lasted quite... for nine years it's kind of <laughs> <laughs> so so I guess what I find a bit unusual as well, I'd love to maybe see a statistic, but I'm guessing 99.9% .9 of CTOs had a, have a tech degree, right? But you yeah, just described right. how you had a business yeah. degree and how you evolved into that. But I can imagine that that brings a whole different perspective to that job, which yeah. which which is quite important as well, right? So most tech people's go business you went the other direction. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I and you know what? I think this was also sort of like the biggest impediment in my head that I only knew of more traditional CTO profiles. Uh, so, you know, a computer science degree or something similar uh, was usually the baseline and they had worked as a software engineer before and then, you know, went up the career ladder. Like, th this, is, this is the majority of people that I knew. Now, I think, you know, since I, I stepped into the role myself, I've definitely also came across a number of examples where, who had also like different career path. And I think it's also a bit of a theme of the last couple of years that um, there, are, there are CTOs who have uh, maybe still very few who have a business background, um, but definitely some who maybe started with a technical background and then did an MBA. So I tried to catch up on the business side uh, later on. And yeah, for me, it was the other way around. So I, I first like, um, you know, have this business background and uh, spend a lot of time there and, and then the technical, then learned the technical side of things. Yeah. Which is also very very good no an ideal in that situation and uh, now Sylvia a lot of people know Zalora and as CTO of Zalora for nine years what has been your biggest takeaway for having been involved in such a from startup to a big and well-known company yeah so I was at Zalora a, a total of nine years but I but CTO I was for the last three years Right. Mm -hmm. So the, the first six years were in product management. Um, and I think, you know, the takeaway during that time was like a very precious experience was to see also how the tech ecosystem in Southeast Asia evolved over time. And, and in particular, also how um, product management practice expanded and how there were more and more people picking up the job. And then these last three years as, as CTO, I think um, 
the biggest learnings were were more on a personal level for me where um what is it like to be part of a C level team in a company? Uh, what is it like to to run a large organization? Because um, the team was when I left two hundred and sixty people, so it's very different from you know yeah most pro like the team size that most product teams lead. Um, and then obviously also catching up on some technical topics like security. I was more involved in the infrastructure than before. So yeah, it's a um, very different set of learnings. <laughs> and when you started, how many were you? So you were, you and now as a lawyer, it's like 260. Do you still remember back then how, how many you were when you started as a lawyer? I mean, the whole of Zalora, you know, it was actually even in the first year already a pretty big company uh, with like more than a thousand people. And um, now I think it's um, not exactly 2000, I think a little bit less than that. And the engineering team, when I started, um, we were maybe between 20 and 30 people based in Singapore. And yeah, that grew then um, over the years. For a long time, we were 120 people. Um, and one of the, the last things that um, I did at the company was then scaling it again to like 260 people, which, which was a yeah, very interesting experience uh, by itself because it's just like, like another big you know, milestone that you take and it, it changes the the collaboration and how the team is set up quite a bit. Nice. And talking about outsourcing or veering towards outsourcing, were there was there anything at at the start or even, you know, before you left, any services that you outsourced rather than kept in house? Yeah, actually, we had uh, for a number of years just a few individuals here and there uh, mm -hmm. who came from um, an agency. But then exactly this scaling process, so to go from 100 plus to 200 plus, um, it was partially done with, with external teams um, from software development agencies in India or across Southeast Asia. Um, so that was really the first time where I think we started to work with agencies at scale um, and, and had to figure out um, how do we onboard actually like a larger number of people? How do we you know, go through that, like assess the talent, find the talent? Um, yeah, it. I think it wasn't, it wasn't so easy. <laughs> yeah, in the beginning, I, I thought like, okay, I'll just ask my friends. I have pretty decent network and I'm sure they can recommend me some good agencies. But that wasn't actually the case. So we really had to like start from scratch um, and sort of like try our luck. Who's a good partner? Yeah. And what were the interesting, Sylvia, that you mentioned that? What were the challenges that you faced when you started outsourcing? Uh, some of the challenges are that I think every organization has their own definition of um, what's a senior, what's a junior person. So you have to figure that out then with uh, the agency partner, what's their definition. Um, and it also very, I mean, it, there's actually many variables that, that come in, like... Um, the particular type of service you're looking for, let's say we were looking for specific programming languages like Golang or PHP developers or iOS or Android developers. Um, so I think there is then also, um, you know, diff different range of years that they've been working in this particular language and then their overall work experience also comes in. So I think this was... Uh, something quite time consuming, you know, to figure out, um, do we speak the same language? Are we on the same page? Yeah. And uh, apart from the the skills, were there any other um, 
details in particular that you were looking for that ultimately led you to make the decision that okay this is the this is a right agency to partner up with Yeah, I think it depends very much on the account manager. I think that's a very critical person, you know, whether it's someone who's um, very responsive and uh, really listens to, to our needs and then picks the right talent uh, to collaborate with us. So it was very much about that. Yeah. And, uh, and would you consider your overall experience as successful? Uh, given that you were actually to scale up and double, uh, I mean, I'm sure there were some, it was a rough ride, but yeah. was it ultimately a successful thing, outsourcing to agencies? I think it was successful in the sense that, you know, we managed to bring in the number of people that we, we needed to augment our teams. Um, but obviously, yeah, I learned a lot along the way that I would do differently right now. For example, I don't think we were that well prepared with the whole onboarding process. Uh, we had something in place. We talked about it as well. We uh, had some initiatives to improve it because we we knew that we had never onboarded uh, such a large number of people within a year. Um, so, you know, I think in theory, we, we knew that that could be a potential weak point. Um, but then... It was very tough because you're busy in your day to day. And I think we were still falling short um, in preparing 100% for it. Um, yeah, so now this is something that I tell other CTOs, right? So <laughs> when they tell me like, okay, I'm trying to scale up my team. Uh, it's one of the things that um, I tell them like, okay, make sure you know you have a good onboarding process in place. This is something that we underestimated. And sometimes even I think the design of the organization you know keeping an eye keeping an eye on the individual team sizes and sometimes you also need to make changes there it, it changes a lot in um, how people work together uh, I think that was also quite new for us and a big difference I would say if your team is always growing like at a constant pace over the years which is what we had at Zalora um it's one thing but if you're making a big jump and you know that can be from 20 to 40 people or that can be from 150 to 200 people but it's a like if there are these big steps um i think that's really one thing to to consider yeah and i probably a lot of people underestimate um including myself when they're doing it for the very first time And so, Sylvia, so beyond advising CTOs, you also advise startups. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah I um, so when I left Zalora, you know, one of the things on, on my to do list was to go back to um, the roots. <laughs> And that meant for me, um, number one, catching up with the startup ecosystem here in Southeast Asia. Uh, I think it was difficult for anyone in the last two years during COVID, obviously. Uh, but for me, it was also, I was I was so busy at Zalora that I, I didn't have time for this anymore. And I was always very um, involved and very passionate about community work. So I simply started with, um, you know, uh, checking back in on my network um, and meeting a number of people. And I, I realized that, Uh, some of them had started their own companies, um, some moved into new startups and um, that, yeah, it's a really like vibrant community, lots of exciting companies out there. And it also made me then decide like, okay, I do not want to uh, focus and, and kind of like put my experience to work for one venture. Uh, but I was trying to figure out like, okay, how can I be more involved um, in, with, with several companies, you know, and support them um, throughout the different phases. So for me, it's also very satisfying because that means I can jump into different business models. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not uh, focusing on, on one industry. One. Um, 
Yeah, I find that very exciting. Um, and then also the companies are at different stages, even though most of them are pretty early stage, but they're still like they're at very different points in their uh, company journey or in their product journey. Uh, and I like that that variety, like, yeah, it's a good, um, challenging stimulation. <laughs> Is there a general theme, though? Like, are there specific types of companies that excite you more than others? Or media and entertainment? Or ventures? Or... <laughs> no, I think it's, no, I, may, I mean, maybe ask me again in six months. I don't know yet. <laughs> For now, uh, I, I think it's pretty much across the board. Yeah, it's a mix, yeah. So, so how do you select then, right? Like with, with thousands and thousands of startups in Singapore alone, let alone Southeast Asia, uh, how, how would you select a specific company to collaborate with? Um, how do you even start that journey? Um, how it gets started is, is typically like with lunch or coffee, you know, <laughs> or someone sending me a message saying like, hey, these guys, <laughs> they, they have some questions about tech or they're, they're a bit lost on tech. Like, you know, do you mind having a chat with them? And many a times it, it just stays actually a coffee chat and, and that's it. And um, that's also great, you know, if that's enough, mm -hmm. like with a few pointers. Um, they they kind of know what are the next steps um but then how i decide is it's um the most important thing for me is like what can i bring to the table so if it's a topic where i really feel like um yeah a fish out of water um because it's maybe an industry uh that or a business model that's like very far away from me um then I, I don't pick it up and I also tell people, I, I think, you know, I, I will also be learning firsthand with you. <laughs> I'm not sure, you know, that's the right setup to, to engage me. Um, I think at the end of the day, I get also more, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, more, it's better for the venture, but also I get more satisfaction if it's a topic that um, I feel I can tap into my experience. But that could still be a range. Like it could be working on the product side, working on a consumer product uh, that I find very interesting. It could be more a coaching angle where there's maybe a CTO who's, um, you know, on his first time CTO or um, trying to scale up a team and um, doesn't exactly know where to start or needs some help along the way. Yeah, these are the topics that I'm very interested in. Nice. And uh, Sylvia, you know, when you have these these coffee sessions and you mentioned that, you know, they they ask for your advice on on certain things. What are the the pointers that you find yourself if there's if there's any, you know, that you find yourself repeating to these, you know, these people that you that ask for your advice? Yeah, um, I think. Finding good tech talent um, and hiring is a theme that comes up quite regularly. Uh, how do you hire? How do you find good tech talent? I mean, this I think this is really <laughs> around the globe, uh, a stretch everywhere, like anyone you talk to. So um, obviously, I don't have a sil silver bullet for it either, but I'm, I'm just sharing you know, some of the things that, that I did and I, that, that are helped. Vital. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I think scaling up teams or maybe opening a new tech center in um, another city, another country um, in Southeast Asia, that's typically a, a theme that, uh, that comes up. Um, maybe not so much because it's super popular at the moment, but just because um, that's something where I, I can share um, how we did it at Zalora and what I've learned. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I think the other themes are really around uh, tech leadership or product leadership, um, how to guide teams. Um, yeah, I think these are the three buckets that, that come up quite regularly. Interesting, very interesting. And for... 
for like startups or who may want to come in contact with you, Sylvia, how can they best reach you? <laughs> um, I think LinkedIn is is uh, probably the easiest. Yeah, yeah, um, and yeah, I definitely actually that's in the at the end of the day also how I got in, in touch with Mangas actually. <laughs> so uh, it can be it can get a little bit busy on LinkedIn, uh, but especially in the last couple of months. Um, where I started ad advising, it's it's been like really resourceful to get introduced to new people uh, and to also get an idea of um, the tech talent out there and different companies. Yeah, yeah. I I use. LinkedIn. I can attest to this. I can attest mm -hmm. to this. A, a message via LinkedIn and a coffee can do miracles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then also let me just put it uh, put it out there that also during this time when Sylvia has uh, you know started advising uh, startups and and tech tech companies she also became a mom during the the pandemic. Right, yeah, Sylvia? That yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, um, I guess that's all for today's episode. And uh, thank you so much for list to our listeners for listening. We hope you gained uh, some insights or a lot of insights from today's episode. And especially thank you to our guest, Sylvia, for sharing your story with us today. Thank you both. So. It was really fun. <laughs> <laughs> was fun too. And uh, once again, this is Jacqueline de Munk. And Wouter Delbare. So stay tuned for the next episode of Mangtas Nation. Thank you for tuning in to Mangtas Nation. Mangtas, your curated marketplace for B2B outsourcing solutions. Follow our social media pages to know more about us. Sign up as a client or sign up as a vendor and be part of this global B2B marketplace. Join us at www.mangtas.com. <laughs> <laughs>